The United States Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Border Patrol agents enjoy great pay, outstanding federal benefits, and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives for newly appointed agents. If you are looking for a way to serve something greater than yourself, consider the United States Border Patrol. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash careers slash usbp. That's cbp.gov slash careers slash usbp. On today's Smart 7, furious air delays continue. Pergoskin gets a high-speed funeral and lots more. It's Wednesday the 30th of August. It's International Whale Shark Day. And happy birthday, Cameron Diaz. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. The National Air Traffic Service continued to deny on Tuesday that the incident which shut down air travel was caused by a cyber attack. The knock-on effects of the outage on Monday have led to delays for thousands of people, which could take days to untangle. It appears that there was some kind of data entry issue at the root of the problem, and Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says he understands the frustration, but his team are all over it. The Transport Secretary is in constant dialogue with all the industry participants. He'll be talking to airlines specifically and making sure that they support passengers to get home as quickly as possible. And passengers obviously have rights with regard to accommodation and alternative flights and making sure that airlines honour those obligations. Let's check in with Transport Secretary Mark Harper then. Mark? It was a technical issue with their flight planning system. The experts that look at these things have told me that it was not a cyber security incident uh, but we'll look at it in great detail to see what happened uh, what we can do to reduce the chances of it happening again and whether there are any further things that can be put in place to reduce this sort of issue. Things aren't quite so calm at the various airports where delayed passengers from the 790 flights that were cancelled are still trying to find ways to get back home. The splendidly named Marco McCool was stranded in Las Palmas and is trying to make his way back to Edinburgh. I was told that there wouldn't be any, any any flights leaving at the moment and um, if we were to get a flight then it would be next week or we could do some transfers in other countries but it's averaging out around about 37 42 hours and we'll all just get back home The Tories will cheerfully tell you that Londoners Yule's expansion cost Labour the chance to win Boris's old seat in the recent by-election. Yule's, in case you're wondering, is the ultra-low emission zone, which sees vehicles that are now compliant charged to enter the zone. It's caused quite a bit of political fuss, but the intention is to clean up London's air and cut down on polluting vehicles. The new expansion finally took effect on Tuesday, and Mayor City Can was defending the implementation on BBC Radio 4. It was a difficult decision, I accept. Yule's was a fact in relation to Uxbridge and Rice. A lot of misinformation and relation to that seat. But Londoners support our policies to clean up our air and city. The expansion saw protests outside Dining Street and detection cameras vandalised as people sought to avoid the 1250 charge for non-compliant vehicles. Councillor Rudambe from Sutton Council says that the zone has been pushed too far. The mayor needs to come here, needs to understand the level of anger that people are expressing, not just here in Sutton, but across the whole of outer London. He really doesn't understand how outer London works. As Russia's war continues in Ukraine, a new report from UNICEF says over 1,300 schools have been totally destroyed and others badly damaged since 2022. That has meant that only one third of Ukrainian school-aged children are actually attending school in Ukraine, while those who fled overseas have struggled to find education because of language barriers and overcrowded classrooms. Meanwhile, Russia hasn't been hanging around when it comes to the plane crash that killed Wagner mercenary boss Evgeny Progoskin. First, the investigation was wrapped up in a matter of days. Now his funeral has already been held in a private ceremony at a St. Petersburg ceremony. His former boss Vladimir Putin didn't attend the funeral but they've already published a picture of his headstone. Professor Michael Clark told Sky News the whole thing has moved at remarkable speed. It was a a closed lid coffin funeral because very often in Greek Orthodox Mm. ceremonies the coffin lid is open so you can see the Uh, the deceased and in this case it was a closed lid so you can draw up from that whatever you like. Florida has had a rough time the last few years. Donald Trump moved there, Ron DeSantis became the governor, and now they're lined up for the first big hurricane of the season. Hurricane Adalia is due to hit Wednesday morning as a Category 4 storm that could have catastrophic effects as it heads straight for the heavily populated Tampa area. Records show that no hurricane has landed in that area since the 1800s, and Governor Ron DeSantis, who had taken a break from presidential campaigning, was warning residents that they need to be prepared for the worst. 
Again, you still have uh, some time, but as we get throughout this day, uh, you are going to start to see uh, uh, rain and wind pick up. Be, be warned about that and, and do what you need to do right now uh, to be able to keep yourself and your family safe. Still to come with the Smart 7, Michael Fassbender makes a comeback and the Lioness is back, Jenny. Right after this. Welcome back. Tuesday night saw this year's Carabao Cup second round kick off with 19 games and some surprises, including Salford City beating Leeds and Fulham knocking out Spurs on penalties. The world of football, though, is still caught up in the catastrophic mess that is Spanish football's reaction to winning the Women's World Cup. There has been no sign of the Spanish Football Federation president backing down, even after FIFA provisionally suspended Luis Rubiales. He's now threatening to sue Jenny Hermoso, the player who was forcibly kissed on TV for lying and defamation. The US women's team and the Lionesses have all claimed to express their disgust at his behaviour and called for a zero tolerance approach. England's Ella Toon spoke to BBC Breakfast. Spain were unbelievable throughout the tournament. Uh, they won the World Cup, which should be the main talking point, and yet is overshadowed by something that happened after the game, which isn't acceptable. And the Lionesses all stand by Jenny Hermoso. Irish singer-songwriter Hosier has really carved out his own niche in the world of music. He's laid back, sensitive and a fan favourite. Now he's got a new album out and he's been busy doing interview rounds to promote Unreal on Earth. He spoke to Apple Music's Zane Lowe and says he still finds reading stories about himself weird and it's easy to get lost in the world of publicity and interviews. I find that when I do step back and I have that time to stand away from representations of myself um, that I can tune into to me again. We haven't heard from Michael Fassbender in a while. That's because he stopped acting for a bit and became a full-time race car driver. Honestly, his ambition was to compete in the Le Mans 24-hour race, which he did last year, finishing 51st out of 62 teams, and he's made a documentary series about it. But he's also back making movies, and the first of three episodes, called The Killer, gets a Venice Film Festival premiere next week. It's directed by David Fincher and stars Fassbender as an assassin alongside Tilda Swinton. The trailer's just dropped, and, well, he seems quite organised. Stick to your plan. the plan. Forbid empathy. Stick to the plan. Anticipate. Don't improvise. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.